This action is not risk-free. It carries risks. And I ask for the prayers of all Americans for our men and women in uniform in the area. Serb forces in Yugoslavia are under attack as the United States is leading the first wave of NATO airstrikes in an attempt to end the violence in Kosovo. Hello and welcome to this special edition of News Chat, the crisis in Kosovo's cruise missiles Cruise missiles are hammering air defense posts, factories, and communication centers, and those attacks could continue through the night and for the next few days. We want to know what you think about all this. You can give us a call at 1-888-MSNBC-USA or email us at opinion at msnbc.com. Here's the latest. A state of war has been declared by Yugoslavia, according to a Yugoslav news agency. The declaration came in a five-word report. There's no word exactly who made the declaration. The first wave of airstrikes has apparently concluded as NATO planes are returning to their air bases. A NATO military spokesperson is denying a report that one NATO plane was shot down. President Clinton is warning the mission is not risk-free for NATO pilots and he says he will speak to the nation again tonight in more detail. Let's go now to NBC's Campbell Brown at the Pentagon. Campbell, first of all, uh, what can you tell us about this report that a plane was shot down. Whose plane? Well, we just got a briefing, John, from Secretary of Defense William Cohen and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Henry Shelton. They are not ready to confirm anything relating to that yet. Um, as you know, there's been a lot of speculation. Um, what Cohen did say was that there has been some air-to-air -air engagement, but what he said was, quote, all our planes return safely, ours in the region. Um, so there are is some indication there that if there is indeed a plane down, it's not one of the NATO planes. But again, they are not confirming that in any way, shape, or form. Um, they did say that the initial attack is still underway, and for that reason, they were pretty short on the facts during this briefing. They were unwilling to give a lot of detail, given that the attack is still ongoing. Um, but basically, John, they're confirming much of what we've been reporting today, that they're primarily going after military targets, the military infrastructure, with cruise missiles, with NATO aircraft, and with the B-2 stealth bombers. Um, one thing that he did say is that they are not attacking civilians, um, but neither Cohen nor Shelton characterize the risk to civilians. Um, other than to say that they are not the focus here. And that's um, interesting, frankly, John, because there is enormous risk to civilians. Uh, this is, these targets they're talking about, the military targets, are in highly populated areas. This is also um, not quite so easy to pinpoint targets here as it was in Iraq. We're not talking about uh, a big military uh, site in the middle of a desert. These are military targets that are, are in near cities and are obscured by trees and mountains, which makes it a lot more dangerous, not only for the civilian population, but also for the NATO pilots. Campbell, uh, we've seen some video of damage, uh, fires burning at night. Now, uh, there are targets uh, both in Pristina, in Kosovo, and in Belgrade, which is the capital of, uh, of Serbia and, and Yugoslavia. Those, those targets in Belgrade, uh, what? What kind of targets in Belgrade? What they're telling us now is initially during this phase, they are going after military command centers, um, positions where they believe troops and tanks are. Um, that is the primary focus at this point. But again, as you said, you're talking about in and around Belgrade. This is a populated area. There were civilians evacuating, as we well know, last night. But there are a lot of people who are hunkered down there, hoarding food and water, um, getting ready for this because um, it's not entirely precise. I mean, they're using cruise missiles. These are guided by satellites, and, and they are they are somewhat precise, but they don't always nail it perfectly, as we have certainly seen in the past. They are also using, John, um, and most of the firepower is laser-guided weapons. Those lasers cannot see through the clouds, so when there's a lot of cloud cover, they uh, don't really, uh, aren't able to use the laser-guided 
guided weapons. That is why there was some speculation they were delaying the attack until the skies were clear for that very reason. Campbell Brown at the Pentagon. Campbell, thanks a lot. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more of our special edition of News Chat and the crisis in Kosovo, the attack. It is ongoing. It has begun. It has not ended. Uh, and as it continues, our guests and your phone calls on the situation in Kosovo. We'll be right back. So if we can take off, do our mission, and come back and land safely, we're, we're pretty glad. It's a job. It's what we're trained to do. Uh, part, you know, some of us have been, we were, been doing this for quite a few years. So, extra part, uh, extra you know, there's always a little bit of nervousness anytime you know any kind of real world situation uh, comes up. But it's what we're trained to do, and it's, mission, it's what we signed on to do. There are some U.S. pilots uh, returned from their missions uh, tonight over uh, Serbia and uh, Kosovo. We should tell you that. Uh, the uh, uh, Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, confirmed that there had been an air-to-air -air engagement and uh, said that all U.S. planes have returned safely. So we would assume then that reports of a uh, plane down would be uh, a, a, a Serbian MiG. Uh, let me introduce the guests. General Bernard Trainer is a retired Marine Corps general, is an NBC News military analyst. He joins us from Boston. In New York, Elaine Chow is a distinguished fellow at the Heritage Foundation and is a former director of both the Peace Corps and the United Way. Um, also with us, Gary Kokolari, uh, who is the president of the uh, Albanian Heritage Foundation, and Ken Ellard, an MSNBC uh, military analyst. And of course, Mary Kathleen Flynn is in the uh, MSNBC.com chat room. Uh, General Trainer, uh, I saw you here listening to the entire news conference of the uh, 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 Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Uh, tell us what you uh, were able to, to glean from that that we haven't been. Well, I thought it was a rather interesting conference. Obviously, they can't give too many details at this point. But they did point out a number of things. First of all, they confirmed that uh, we used the B-2, and we have two of them out there, and this was their, uh, their baptismal operation, and it'd be interesting to see what the results of that were. Uh, the second item was the, the, the shooting down of the MiG-29. Now, it's interesting. Up until this point, very few people have talked about the air defenses in terms of the, the Yugoslavian Air Force. It's always been in terms of the missiles and, and so forth. But the, uh, the Yugoslavs have about 250 combat aircraft, of which some are MiG-29s, which was kind of an advanced Soviet uh, uh, weapon. And it was interesting to see, now, were these aircraft going to come up and contest the NATO planes, or were they going to stay hidden as they happened in Iraq, or flee as they did in Iraq during, during the Gulf War? And clearly they have come up to fight, and the, Ira the, uh, the Yugoslavs have already lost uh, one of them. The third thing that I found of interest was the fact that these initial air attacks are not exclusively on fixed and strategic locations and infrastructure, but apparently they are also going after the Yugoslavian or the Serbian field forces that are in Kosovo. And that's rather interesting because when you're going against ground targets, it gets a little hairy for the pilots because they are hard to locate and hard to hit. You sometimes have to come down low to get them, which, which puts you in danger of the ordinary garden variety of anti-aircraft guns. But clearly, the whole operation is going against his air defenses, his fixed command and control uh, facilities, his uh, logistics and infrastructure, and against the field forces in Kosovo. So this is a very widespread operation encompassing all of Yugoslavia. We've got to take a break. When we come back, uh, more of our guests will be joined also by Major General Perry Smith, retired Air Force General, and we'll take a look at what's going on in Kosovo. Sergey Lavrov, uh, ambassador from Russia to the United Nations, reading a statement from Russian President Boris Yeltsin uh, demanding an immediate cessation of the bombing uh, uh, and also saying that apparently NATO intends to enter the 21st century as a world gendarme. This is a cruise missile uh, in the area of uh, Pristina, or Pristina, Serbian State TV. And um, that is what you call an incoming. Here, here is, uh, is some damage in a place called Novosad, 
which is in, a, in an autonomous, autonomous province uh, north of, of uh, Serbia. Uh, we're, we're continuing now with our guests. Uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't heard from uh, Gary Kokolari or Ken Allard or Elaine Chow, so let me uh, go to Gary first. Gary, uh, you are with the Albanian Heritage Foundation. This, uh, how, how are Albanians viewing this? As, as someone riding to their rescue at long last, or, or what? Well, I'm sure my fellow Al Albanians would agree with me that we think this has been a long time coming. I know most of the Americans out there don't know much about Kosovo or Albania. Uh, but this is something that's been simmering for well over a decade, and we are very familiar with the atrocities that have been caused by this monster known as Milosevic. Um, I, I don't want to underestimate the concern that I would have, and I'm sure my fellow Albanian Americans would agree, uh, with respect to the danger that is, our soldiers are being placed in. Uh, but by the same token, uh, there is genocide being performed in Kosovo. This is a problem for the stability of Europe. And this monster known as Milosevic must be stopped, and he must be stopped right here. Well, Gary, I, I mean, what, what do you think this bombing is doing? I mean, do you, you actually think this is going to stop? Uh, uh, I believe, my own, in my own opinion, I believe he will capitulate very quickly. I just hope that they bomb him enough to degrade his capabilities so that he will honor any agreements going forward and so that we'll defang him from any future uh, uh, complications. Ken Allard, has Gary got a hope there? Is this, is this going to uh, defang Milosevic or bring him around to a capitulation? John, it really does depend on how vigorously this air campaign is prosecuted. Uh, and from everything we can see right now, uh, it is an extremely comprehensive campaign. Uh, what I think we are in this thing for, however, is for the long term. So I think that uh, all you got to do is sit there and wait and see. I mean, the president basically said among our objectives, is degrading his military capabilities. What that means is something we're going to see played out over the next several weeks. Elaine Chow, at 8 o'clock, we're going to hear from the president again, uh, justifying uh, w w what he's doing. At this point, Congress is behind him, the Senate is behind him, the American people is behind him. Well, I, uh, would, I, I would make a difference. I would make a, I would, uh, make a slight different uh, assessment of the situation. I think clearly the Senate vote of 5841 does not imply that uh, people are in total agreement with the president's actions. I think there's no doubt, and it must be emphasized, and I do want to emphasize that once the bombings have begun, that uh, the American people are behind the NATO, uh, NATO pilots. But for those that question the airstrikes, there's a great deal of, um, of, of uh, concern about what is the exit strategy, what is the end game, and what is the true credibility of this administration. I mean, Milosevic was, um, you know, his signature is on the Dayton Accord, and um, it's questionable as to whether anything can be brought about uh, exactly. that will bring about a lasting peace. Well, I'm a little peace. confused. Lane, are you saying that uh, if, if Milosevic is operating within his own borders as defined by the Dayton Accord, he has a free hand on any no, people within those all. borders? No, not at all. Not at then all. what are we supposed to do? I think, what, I think those who question the airstrikes see a dizzying array of troubling issues and questions. Well, that's fine, and but what, we, are the we are what is the dizzying array well, of alternatives? Well, I think, I think if we are concerned about, in fact, uh, massacres, uh, there are many other parts of the world in which there have been tremendous uh, displays of uh, atrocities. I and mean, we're talking about Burundi, we're talking about no, Sudan. Well, but, you know, we're no, also we're talking, talking about uh, Elaine, uh, the uh, Kurds. Have you been introduced to the doctrine of limited tears as well, I think enunciated this is a false by General choice. Trainer? No, no. This is a false choice. I mean, what choice. are you saying, that we should go wherever or we should go nowhere? No, I think that this is a false choice that the President has given the Congress. It's making, he has made the choice that either, either it's all or nothing. And we don't have time to get involved or get into the whole history leading up to this effort. But clearly, there has been missteps all along the way. There have been democratic forces uh, in Belgrade that were and could have been supported to encourage uh, a, some kind of a challenge, a democratic populist challenge uh, to Milosevic. And that has not occurred. Let me so the question the, uh, now is whether there will let, be some let me exit ask strategy the, uh, to this. military guys here. Uh, General Smith. Uh, did we miss an opportunity somewhere to support a, uh, an uprising against Milosevic in uh, Belgrade that would have headed off this moment? Uh, General Smith, sorry. I, yes, I, sorry. Did we miss an opportunity at some point to uh, support an uprising against Milosevic that would have headed off this moment? 
Uh, I don't see that in the cards. I do, do think we've played the diplomatic game very poorly over the last year. The president's been distracted for a lot of other reasons, and I think we could have solved this diplomatically. But we're, I don't. I don't see that kind of operation uh, be, taking place. What we have here, it seems to me, is a, an attempt to use air power coercion to get Milosevic to stop doing some very bad stuff, and it's a big challenge to have air power alone do that. It worked in Bosnia in 1995, but there was also a ground campaign yeah. going on at the same time. There was no ground campaign to put pressure on the Serbian military. So well, the challenge we, is, can air power alone do it? Well, this actually leads to the very next point, and that is we have to be very vigilant, vigilant that uh, we are aware of what this air uh, campaign may lead to, and that's ground troops. Uh, will Americans be ready be, for that? Well, let me, let me, let me go ask uh, uh, Gary Kokolari. In support of uh, Albanians who are get, uh, you know, feeling the boot of Mr. Milosevic, would you, as an Albanian-American, say, you know what, we need American uh, men and women in uniform on the ground fighting the Albanian fight? Is that even, is that in the cards? I don't think the Kosovars are asking for that. Certainly, if there is a peace agreement, we would expect that uh, the United States would participate uh, with NATO troops. And what I've been telling uh, people on Capitol Hill is you have a choice. You can send 4,000 American soldiers into that area to support a peace agreement, hope, and hopefully we'll get to that point. Send 4,000 troops now, or you can send 40,000 troops later. Take your choice. Uh, with respect to the comment that uh, 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 Elaine made earlier about Congress, I'd like to say something and not vote. Of those Congress, of these senators that voted uh, against military involvement, it's, it's really disheartening because a number of those senators, if you had asked them four or five months ago, they would have told you they would have supported this. And I know for a fact that many of them would have supported this. The fact is, this has become nothing more than a thinly veiled partisan attack on the president because of the concern over the impeachment process. And I'm very, very ashamed that they would do that when there's genocide being uh, performed on people. With respect, well, to the issue, with respect to the issue of problems in other parts of the world, I guess we can't be the world's policemen or maybe the world's firemen putting out fires. But I guess you have to look at the fires that are closest to home. This is on the doorstep of Europe. NATO has an obligation to protect the security of Europe, and we have an obligation to NATO. I We've got to Gary take a break. When we come back, we'll continue this debate. Are we doing the right thing? We're certainly doing it. Crisis in Kosovo. We'll be back after this quick break. Our strikes have three objectives. First, to demonstrate the seriousness of NATO's opposition to aggression and its support for peace. Second, to deter President Milosevic from continuing and escalating his attacks on helpless civilians by imposing a price for those attacks. And third, if necessary, to damage Serbia's capacity to wage war against Kosovo in the future by seriously diminishing its military capabilities. That was the president earlier outlining his reasons for going ahead. We're joined now by Senator John McCain, who voted to support the president uh, reluctantly, but wants to know what the exit strategy is. Uh, Senator McCain, uh, do the president's goals sound doable with an air campaign? I'm, I'm not sure, John, whether they are or, or not, because I, I don't know how you frankly define those goals. Um, uh, de degrade their capability. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure how you gauge that kind of success or lack of success. So Is it purposely sure. vague, perhaps? I, I don't know, but I, I would like to say, John, that you know I have had ex serious reservations before this operation began, and I'm sure I may uh, afterwards. But right now, as you know, the young men and women are in harm's way. The message to Mr. Milosevic is that stop what you're doing, we'll beat you, and uh, the longer you hold out, uh, the worse it's going to be for you. We've got to, we've got to support at this time, and uh, I think it's important that we not send any mis mixed messages now that our men and women are in harm's way. Senator McCain, was there any of, uh, in the votes in the Senate against this operation, was there any leftover, oh, uh, animosity to the president from the impeachment process, or did this vote stand on its own? 
No, John, I think uh, it was not a result of any bitterness about the impeachment process. There's been a dramatic erosion in the credibility of the president. Twice in a couple of weeks ago, he threatened the use of force if a deadline wasn't met. The deadline passed. It didn't happen. There's real questions, as you know, about the China situation, North Korea, uh, what's going on in Iraq. We bombed Iraq so that the inspectors could inspect, because the inspectors weren't being allowed to inspect, and now there's no, no inspectors there. So there, there is a credibility problem. On uh, that note, this, Senator, let yes. me just tell you, this break is coming, whether I like it or not. Thanks. But right afterwards, more from Senator McCain. Senator John McCain is still with us. Senator McCain, if you wonder what the exit strategy is, maybe you can tell us what it should be. The exit strategy has to be a preparation for ground action if uh, the air action doesn't work. I think that's true in most modern military engagements, but I would add a strong caveat, and that should be European ground troops and not American ground troops. This is fundamentally a European problem, as you know, John, and we're there because they can't do it, and uh, particularly from the air, but I would hope they would be able to achieve their goals with their own ground troops if necessary. Senator McCain, uh, of course, you were a pilot, you were shot down, you were held prisoner of war, you know the power of air power. Can't air power degrade Milosevic's ability to be aggressive to the Albanians? Can't it punish him for what he's done? Can't it demonstrate NATO's resolve? Can't it meet those three goals the President set out? Well, I hope so, but I, again, I'm not sure what is meant by degrade. Uh, one bomb uh, on a supply dump, is that, that's a degradation. Uh, I think the question is, is whether it will deter Milosevic now and forever uh, from trying to inflict the atrocities which he's inflicting on the people of Kosovo. And by the way, of Kosovo. And by the way, uh, let's be sure we know who the bad guy is here. It's Mr. Milosevic, and he's the one that was responsible for the ethnic cleansing in Srebrenica and the atrocities in Bosnia, and he's responsible for this too. I would love to see him taken out one way or another, uh, actually by his own people, because he's a bad guy, as you know. Senator McCain, do you think that there really is any hope uh, that the European Union or a union of European nations would commit ground troops uh, to, to this fight in this place? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I think if we made it clear to them that at some point the United States cannot carry the entire burden. You know, you hear a lot about 19 nations being involved in these airstrikes. There's only, really only one nation that is doing about 90 percent of the very hazardous aspect uh, of these operations. Uh, the Europeans uh, have modern military establishments. Uh, they would be fighting against one which is not really that modern, although good. And so you just can't expect Americans to come and carry the burden all the time, although as the world superpower, we have to do it a lot of the time. Senator John McCain, thanks, uh, thanks for John. joining us. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, more crisis in Kosovo. The bombing is underway as we speak. More after this quick break. Let me introduce Obrad Kesik. He's an analyst for Balkan Affairs. He joins us from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, the rest of our guests are still with us. Ken Allard, Bernard Trainer, and Gary Kokolari. Uh, let me go to uh, Obrad, if you'd hang on just a second. Ken Allard, why do you think the, uh, the objections made by the Russian ambassador to the U.N. are significant? Uh, General Smith thought in a lot of ways they were predictable. Well, John, of course, what you have to remember is that I'm also our lowest-ranking military analyst uh, with respect to General Trainer and General Smith. However, what I think is really significant here is the fact that uh, the Russians have been not only our partners in NATO uh, for the last several years, but they've also been active partners in what we've been doing in Bosnia on the ground. There, in fact, have been Russian soldiers that have been part of both the implementation and the stabilization forces. That has all been put on hold. My take on this thing is, in fact, that uh, the home honeymoon that we've been enjoying with the Russians is now over. This signals, I think, a major shift in Russian foreign policy. We saw it beginning last December. I think this is probably the thing that puts paid to it. Well, General Trainer, before I go to Elbrod, uh, there, there has been a notion that the uh, Russians, while not supporting the uh, NATO action and the U.S. action, have been kind of ticked at the Serbs themselves and uh, are, uh, you know, are not, uh, not going to go to the mat over this. Is that your impression? Oh, I think that the, the Russians are furious with Milosevic. He has put them in the bind, but blood's thicker than water, and they're fellow Slavs, and they're sticking by them. 
But he's put, them, put the Russians in a hell of a bind. Uh, they're trying to come to this country and get the IMF to give them uh, some loans. They're trying to develop good relations with the West. And this is just torpedoing it. Now, the one thing that was surprised me was the use of military measures that was, that was mentioned at the, at the UN. Now, I don't know what these military measures could be. They're not active military measures, but perhaps the supplying of, of equipment uh, to the Serbs would be about the, the extent of it. But I would not read into that that in any way that the, the Russians are going to get themselves militarily involved in this thing directly. Obrad Kesik, uh, an analyst in Balkan Affairs. Uh, let me go back to square one because we haven't heard uh, from you yet on this. This, this. this series of attacks is ongoing. Uh, apparently we don't have, we, have, we may have a pause, we're, we may not, but it, it appears to be a flowing wave of attacks. Uh, do you believe that this uh, kind of sustained air attack for a matter of weeks, if, if necessary, could, could achieve what the president set out as a goal? Uh, to, uh, one, demonstrate NATO's resolve. Two, to deter uh, Milosevic uh, from uh, further atrocities against the uh, Albanians. And, and thirdly, uh, to degrade his ability to commit those atrocities. Uh, I believe at best we could have mixed results uh, on the first issue in terms of uh, uh, trying to limit the, uh, Milosevic's ability uh, to go after the Albanians. I think that is highly unlikely. Uh, most of the attacks are carried out by small units in the field, special forces uh, backed by a couple of uh, pieces of armor, artillery, and then also mobile mortars and uh, rocket propelled grenades. Now. I don't think that in the short term we're going to see a decrease in the violence in Kosovo. In fact, uh, I would argue that uh, the threat of NATO airstrikes actually accelerated the violence, that uh, Milosevic uh, f called his troops to attack, forced them to attack in order to try to limit the amount of damage the KLA could do at the same time that uh, NATO, tr NATO uh, was involved in airstrike. So on that account, it's highly unlikely that that is going to be achievable. In terms of uh, demonstrating NATO resolve, I think that's a different issue. In the short term, most definitely. Uh, in the long term, that remains to be seen uh, because the main issue is always going to be how far each side can escalate. Now, I believe that Mr. Milosevic uh, is capable of escalating and meeting each of the escalations that the president uh, raises. And if he's able to do that and we're limited in terms of uh, NATO troops going in on the ground, that that's a no-go from the very beginning, then I would say his cards are much better than the cards that NATO has to play. Uh, we've already seen that his own position, Milosevic's position, has been strengthened in Serbia. And so that's also a consequence of these airstrikes. He's rallied popular support, not because people uh, support him as an individual or his policies, but because at a time when NATO is attacking the country, most Serbs feel that that's not a time to de debate politics, that you need to defend the country. Yeah, it's a familiar uh, feeling. We have it here as well. Gary Kokolari, uh, 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 by the way, uh, I'm just hearing here that uh, Reuters is reporting uh, air raid sirens in Belgrade at this moment. Uh, so apparently either they're practicing or there is another wave coming in. Gary Kokolari, uh, uh, Obrad Kesik uh, raised a point. Uh, once the president, Clinton, uh, made it known his intentions to try to stop Milosevic as, a, uh, as he moved uh, in, on Kosovo, uh, Milosevic moved faster. And, and, and during this delay uh, that occurred since, what, last, late last week and, until today, uh, Milosevic has been able to do question mark. How much damage to A, the KLA, and B, just Albanians living there? Well, obviously we'll have to see that, and that's one of our big fears, that he will go after civilians, which again is one of the key reasons why we're there. I have a little bit more confidence in the uh, American military. I remember there were uh, similar concerns with the, uh, the vaunted Red Guard during the uh, uh, Iraq War. Uh, certainly, I believe that the Serbian army is better equipped and probably more formidable than the Iraqi army, so I don't want to underestimate them. But there's another alternative here. Uh, perhaps, maybe, we should be telling Mr. Milosevic, if you do not capitulate to this bombing, then the whole issue of independence is back on the table, 
and we are going to arm the Kosovo Liberation Army. We are going to set up formal training camps for them in northern Albania, and let's turn it into an even fight, and we will become the KLA's Air Force. So that's another uh, way of trying to, of avoiding sending any American ground troops in there. I gotta go to a break. When we come back, we'll uh, draw our two military analysts back into the discussion. Uh, the attacks are continuing. Air raid sirens in Belgrade, according to Reuters, right now. Crisis in Kosovo continues right after this break. Protesters at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, so it isn't just Boris Yeltsin who is upset about the NATO uh, attacks on uh, Yugoslavia and Kosovo, but um, Russian citizens as well. And just a little bit of time left. Uh, let me go to Gary Kokolari. Uh, Gary, uh, you know, if if you were calling the shots, and I know you're not, how long would this air campaign go on? Uh, hopefully for as long as it takes to uh, what is that days, get weeks, months to stand down. I, m I would hope that it would be not not more than a few days. I am concerned about the welfare of the Albanians. Uh, I would like to comment about this issue of civil war. Uh, this is, first of all, much has been made about invading a sovereign state. Uh, I think that's being generous. I think this is a rogue state that's being run by a, a brutal dictator. And, you know, where do we stand? I can tell you that having some knowledge of the area, that it would be, if this went on unchecked, it would be a matter of time between, before Albania would be drawn in, and you showed Macedonia on the screen before. There are half a million Albanians in, uh, in Macedonia, and they care very deeply about what's happening to their brethren in Kosovo. So you go from a civil war, if that's what you want to call it, and again, I don't call it a civil war, I call it genocide, you quickly move to an interregional war. And that's a danger that we have to try Gary, to Gary, on that note, I've got to cut you off. Thanks, Gary Kokolari. Uh, thanks to Bernard Trainer. Thanks to Ken Allard and Mary Kathleen Flynn. That is it for News Chat. Coming up, uh, Internight. back. The crisis in Kosovo uh, continues. We're in the fifth day and or night of attacks and uh, what is called phase two as uh, NATO forces start targeting Serb uh, military and police operations in Kosovo and elsewhere. Lieutenant General Bernard Trainer is with us. He is a retired Marine Corps general and an NBC News military analyst. Also with us in New York, Gary Kokolari is president of the Albanian Heritage Foundation. And in San Francisco, Stephen Zunis is the chair of the Peace and Justice Studies Program at the University of San Francisco. And I think across the room from me, believe it or not, Omar Wasso is standing by uh, as the MSNBC Internet Analyst today, talking to you in the MSNBC.com chat room. Um, General Trainer. Uh, before we start talking about whether or not there are these atrocities going on and to what extent they're going on, since we can't see it, evidently, uh, what, what is, explain this phase two. Now, now we're not targeting so much facilities around uh, Belgrade, but forces in the forward theater, as it were. I, the, fr the phrase phase two operation, uh, John, I think is, is kind of a, a public relations term. Uh, we started the bombing and to take out two things. Number one is integrated air defense system, and I'm sure that has been degraded sufficiently. Uh, number two, to take out a lot of his fixed installations, airfields, supply depots, fuel depots, and so forth, uh, throughout Yugoslavia. Uh, part and parcel of that uh, was the, the option at a certain point to start to attack his ground forces, his tanks and his infantry and that sort of thing. I think the administration was hoping it wouldn't come to that. I think they were hoping that the, the shock of the strategic bombing campaign would bring Milosevic to his, to his senses because they weren't particularly anxious and they aren't particularly anxious to go after the forces in the field because that means your aircraft have to come in lower, you can't stand off and bomb your targets. These are not fixed targets, they are targets that will move and maneuver and hide and shoot back with a great deal more effectiveness than fixed targets when you hit them from high altitude. So the risk to NATO aircraft go up uh, with these low-level attacks against tanks and infantry and artillery and, and so forth. And the returns on them probably are not that good because it's, it's hard to find them. And you're, you're expending a very expensive weapon against a relatively cheap tank or cheap art, artillery piece. And the bottom line, however, is that it's probably not going to make the conditions for the, the Kosovar Albanians 
any better. It may actually make it worse because they could be victims of collateral damages. Gary Cocolari, on that topic, that was the uh, that was the topic this morning at the NATO briefing. Are these attacks making it worse? on the coast of our Albanians uh, in terms of uh, reprisals from the Serbs? Well, I think we have to look at what was happening there before they started the bombing. The Serbs were mounting 40,000 troops and they were getting ready to do this anyway. And what we're seeing here is nothing more than a, a pack of factual inconsistencies. Here we have this journalist, uh, this woman, I don't know her name from uh, reporting, I guess from Belgrade. Uh, we had the Balkan Affairs Institute woman that was on your program before. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, these are modern, these are Serbian Mataharis. Uh, you've had the uh, foreign minister of, uh, of Serbia and the charged affairs here in New York. I mean, these are the uh, Serb equivalents of Tarek Aziz. And I can tell our viewers out here that the way you can tell they're lying is their lips are moving. Kerry, on that note, I've got to break. When we come back, Gary Kokolari, are the atrocities happening or not? Gary says they are. We'll be back on the crisis in Kosovo right after this quick break. Crisis in Kosovo continues both here and in Kosovo and Yugoslavia in general, where the fifth night of uh, NATO attacks is underway. Gary Kokolari, uh, what? Just if you could give me a quick answer, what is going on? If if there is in fact 15,000 uh, people uh, in a forced march toward the Albanian border, and yet a hundred have crossed the border, where are those 15,000? Uh, that's a very good question, but I, I think I can tell you about some more specific things that are going on. Uh, I'm getting reports from sources both within Kosovo and also from Albania that, first, for instance, yesterday, uh, Mr. Issa Marici, in front of his wife and his children, the Serbs broke into their house and slit his throat right in front of his wife. There are 200 people, mutilated bodies of Albanians, sitting in a morgue in Pristina as we talk right now. In Peja, 50 people have been slaughtered, 50 males, and I have a list of them right here, and I'd be happy to have the Serbs check this out and tell us where these people are. 17 members of one family, the Popai family, have been killed. And this is just part of a pattern. They did it in Croatia, they did it in Bosnia, and more recently, let's look at what they did in Kosovo. If your viewers want a third opinion, look at the Human Rights Watch report. Terra in Drenica. In September, they murdered 30 members of the, of the Delii family, including an 18-month-old baby that they blew their, the baby's brains out at point-blank range with a gun. I mean, come on, what more proof do we need? Uh, Steven Zunas, uh, you take the position that the bombing actually makes it worse on the uh, Kosovar Albanians? I'm afraid so. This is what many of us warned about, and I'm talking about people like myself who've been sympathetic with the Kosovo Albanian side for many, many years. Unable to challenge NATO power, the Serbs are taking their vengeance on the most vulnerable people around, namely the very Kosovo Albanians we're trying to protect. Indeed, 